Welcome back to the Rory Talks Football Channel, your daily Arsenal news updates, debates and my opinions. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. We're on the way to 11,200 subscribers. And if you could click that like button, I'd be incredibly grateful. Now, today is not a live stream. It's an actual video. The reason being, I'm off out to watch the boys, to watch the boys tonight. So there's no live stream. I apologize for that. But there is a lot of news to talk about. So I thought I'd give you a little video, at least give you something to watch this evening and there is a lot to talk about so strap yourselves in should only take about 10 minutes and we'll cover it all starting uh with some news coming out of belgium this is coming from dh le sport it was also covered by the antwerp gazette i think it was um arsenal could beat the competition from major rivals to sign psv winger johan bakayoko the gunners are now number one track for the young belgian there is currently no question of an agreement but the file is moving in the right direction now for those of you that have forgotten or haven't seen previously what Bakayoko is all about, we'll do a little greenery check. We'll do a greenery check for you. So this is Johan Bakayoko. Uh, if we flick this away from the Euros to the Eredivisie where he's been this season, he's at PSV. He's 21 years old, only just turned 21 years old, predominantly a right winger. Um, and this is sensational. We love this. High touches, high chance creation. Not too bad on the goals front, takes a lot of shots, so a bit a bit Doku-esque in terms of his finishing ability, um, but he is a top, top player. Now, that's showing his Euros. He's only played 33 minutes of the Euros. A bit disappointing, actually. We saw him make a cameo in their first game, arguably could have had a goal, but we'll focus on what he's done in the era de VC this season. 12 goals, uh, a number of assists as well. And it's just unbelievable greenery if we come down here. Like I said, 12 goals from an XG of 8.7, which isn't too bad. Loads of shots as well. Now, actually, what that shows is a relative level of uh, not being clinical. In some ways, you almost want these numbers to be low and these numbers to be high. That's th The lower these are compared to these, the more clinical they are. Now, if you go and look at Doku, by the way, this is well up here and this is well down here. So that's what you're talking about. Nine assists as well this season. Um, from 10.6, so he should have actually had more assists if other players could finish their dinner. 87% pass accuracy for an attacking player, for a winger. That is absolutely sensational. Chance creation through the roof. Crossing accuracy could be a bit better. Um, dribbler of the ball, ridiculous number of touches. Touches in the opposition box. I mean, these just tick all of the boxes that you want in an Arsenal player, and so do these down here. If you then look to the more defensive side of the game, this is where Bukayo Saka absolutely thrives. Recoveries, winning the ball in the final third, um, wins loads of tackles, uh, a dual winner as well. It's just, this, this is very, very, very good. Now, of course, you then have to rely on the eye test, and we're trying to do that during the Euros. Look, I'm not going to pretend that I watch PSV week in, week out, but this is a very talented player that I'm very interested in, and it is exciting as a wing option that Arsenal are supposedly leading the race for him. So that's Bakayoko. Uh, and we'll touch on some of the other wingers and where we stand with those throughout the rest of the video. Ed Ahrens uh, in The Guardian today. Crystal Palace are bracing themselves for interest in Eberichi Eze with Arsenal, Man City and Spurs believed to be uh, among those considering a move for the player who is likely to cost more than £60 million. I think it's around £60 million. I don't think it's more than £60 million. I think it is around about £60 million. Pounds. Now, compared to Bakayoko, I think Bakayoko is more likely to be around 40. Uh, so Eze is more expensive. Now, they're not even the same player, uh, but they are somewhat comparable unless you think that we'd go and get Eze and a winger, which I don't think we will. Eze, look, I've said it before, for £60 million, I'd, I, I would take it. Absolutely. Uh, you can play off the left, you can play off the right, you can play as an eight. He's incredibly versatile. Look, the only potential downside is that he's slightly older than the other wingers that we're looking at, but everyone's career progresses and moves at a different rate. As a Premier League proven, he would walk into the... Well, he wouldn't walk into the team, but he'd walk into the squad and he'd be able to hit the ground running. So I'd like the uh, the, the Eze links to remain there, and hopefully that's something that happens later in the window. One thing that we do need to talk about, people are getting very agitated about the lack of business that we've done so far, and... Gunner blog spoke about this today, about why we're a bit slower in the market. And the reason is we don't need to be quick in the market. The, the teams that are doing business before the end of June are doing it because they are concerned about PSR. Villa have got the job done in terms of selling the players that they, they needed to sell. It's believed Everton still need to sell one more player before uh, Sunday 
is the deadline for their PSR issues. Maybe someone comes in for Onana, but the difference is we actually want our business to be done in July. The way that our summer went big last summer, um, with, with the money that we spent last summer, we really could do with that dropping off. And then we start the next three-year cycle in July so that we're not tied by, for example, the Declan Rice deal in three years' time. It's forward thinking. It's thinking a long way ahead, and that can be frustrating. But I do think once we get into July, we'll start seeing a lot more movement. Uh, some more news coming today. Mark Douglas. Now, Mark Douglas is apparently very good when it comes to Newcastle-specific news. He works up in the Northwest. Um, the expiration of the 100 million clause puts... Newcastle in control of Bruno Guimara's future, even if it is unlikely uh, to completely extinguish interest from City or Arsenal, who both appear to rate him closer to the 80 million mark and could test the waters with offers later in the transfer window. So it is believed neither Arsenal nor City valued uh, Bruno Guimaraes at his his release clause value, which was around 100 million. That's now expired. Now, of course, if someone had come in and triggered the release clause, Newcastle would have had no option but to let him go. Uh, now, if Arsenal come in for 80 million, they can say no. So they're in control, but maybe Arsenal, maybe Man City go in for him. Look, I think for 80 million quid, yes, please. Long-term partner for Declan Rice, Bruno G, 80 million. I know it's, it is expensive, uh, but I think it works. I think it works. So I would go in for 80 million. But I wouldn't be surprised if Newcastle didn't let him go for 80 million. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. On to Nico Williams. Now, this is, look, as, as he didn't actually play yesterday, I don't think he may have come on as a sub, but I don't think he did. Spain did very well without him anyway. Um, he's had a very good Euros so far. He's, uh, he's attracting a lot of interest. Now, Fabrizio came out today and confirmed that Chelsea are out of the race. The financial package is too much for them. And my gut feeling is if a financial package is too much for Chelsea, it's probably too much to us. But Charles Watts has gone into that a bit deeper. Uh, he said, Arsenal are admirers of Nico Williams. So are plenty of other top clubs across Europe. On paper, the release clause of around 50 million looks like a very appealing one. But as far as I'm aware, it's not as simple as that. You have to remember that release clauses in Spain have to be paid in full. And that makes deals very expensive as clubs can't spread, uh, spread the transfer fee out over the length of the contract like they usually do. But in Williams' case, the wages are also understood to be a pretty significant issue. And we've spoken about this. We've spoken about Williams' wages. Um, and he's going to kind of why. And, and it's because athletic club are big players. Actually, if you look across the board, the majority of their players, their main players, are on big wages. And the reason being is because of the, the unique way that Athletic operate. And that is basically all of their players come from the same region of Spain. Uh, and in order to keep them at the club, where they're not competing for titles, realistically, they have to pay them big wages. So Williams is on good money. And the word is that interested clubs across the board have been surprised by the wages that he would want to move for uh, this summer. Arsenal are good payers, but they have a wage bill that they've worked hard to get into check in recent years. So they don't want to do anything stupid now and undo all of that hard work. For Arsenal to immediately make him one of the highest earners at the club would be a risk because it would unsettle the squad a bit. And I think We've spoken about that in general. It's good to obviously have Charles Watts talking about it as well for confirmation of that. But that is the underlying issue. You can't have Nico Williams coming in as an unproven player and be one of the top three or four owners of the club. It doesn't work. It makes it very difficult to then go back and negotiate new deals for Saka, Erdegaard, Saliba, who, even though they've all signed new deals recently, will be back into conversations within the next year of extending them again. And that becomes problematic. So, uh, yeah, Nico Williams, a tricky one to do because of the financial side of that. And now on to some of the in-house Arsenal things, the selling and what the players are doing currently. So this came from Connor Hum today. Arsenal value Eddie Nketiah at £50 million and have set that as their asking price should they sell this summer. £50 million for Eddie Nketiah. I mean, bargain absolute bargain if you ask me no i don't know what that's about um truthfully look if we put it this way if we were going to go and spend 50 million in the market right now and the you know who eddie and ketia is take the arsenal side out of it who eddie and ketia is the limited minutes he's had for arsenal the chances that he's had at arsenal and not fully taken 
I, you wouldn't want to pay anywhere near 50 million quid for it. So why Arsenal? Look, on one hand, there's two ways of looking at this, actually, truthfully. On one hand, I like it because I like the fact that Arsenal aren't wanting to be messed around in the market, that we're saying, no, actually, these players are highly valuable. And if you're looking at, you know, Martson being 37 and a half million, or, you know, we, you could list off loads of numbers where Broha, Chelsea wanted God knows how much for Broha. Arsenal could look at it and say, well, based on the market, Eddie and Ketty is worth 50 million. And if we're going out and demanding those numbers for our players, that is good. I think we've inherently been a bad selling club. We've sold players too cheaply. So that's the one side of looking at it. The other side of looking at it is we get to the end of the window and we've not sold Eddie and Ketia. And the club turn around and say, well, no one met our valuation of him. And that's all well and good, but then we're stuck with Eddie and Ketia still. And we all know we need to generate money to buy to bring players in. We all know truthfully, Eddie and Ketia is not good enough at this point. We've seen it two seasons in a row. Eddie and Ketia is not at the level that we need in the squad. And if he's still here at the end of the summer, that's a problem. And I'd rather sell him this summer for 30 million than not sell him at all. And and you may not think that Arsenal would do that. It is quite common. Uh, last summer, Man United did it with McTominay, with Maguire. You know, they turn around. They They were never going to buy replacements for those players. And so then, even though they had really quite good offers for McTominay and Maguire, it didn't meet their value, so they didn't happen. Um, so that would be the worrying side of that for me. I mean, if Nketiah's worth 50, Reese Nelson's worth 50. And if they're worth 50, Smith Rowe's worth 70. And Ramsdale's worth 80. Nuno Tavares is worth about 30 at that point. So, yeah, it's a sticky one. Uh, I just hope that we sell him for decent money. Look, there are lots of clubs interested in him, which is the good thing. Uh, but I would imagine we don't get 50 million for him this summer. Uh, another thing then coming from James Benj, Ben White, Eddie Nketiah, Jurgen Timber, Reese Nelson, Emil Smith-Rowe and Fabio Vieira have all joined up with Arteta in Marbella on Monday to work on their fitness and their form uh, three weeks ahead of the start of preseason. Erdegaard is also set to join them in the coming days. CBS Sports understands that Smith-Rowe actually travelled out a week before the rest of the squad to get a head start on his fitness work. Uh, Nelson, meanwhile, favours a move away from the club. According to CBS Sports sources, Crystal Palace, West Ham and Brighton are all long-term admirers of Reese Nelson. So Reese Nelson is there on this early preseason camp in Marbella. Lovely, lovely. Um, good to get some of those squad members back together. What I'm really impressed with here is Smith Rowe. Um, and it's... Sorry, it is roasting hot. I am sweating my tits off. It's interesting with Smith Rowe that actually, even though I said I think we sell one of Smith Rowe and Fabio Vieira this summer, I've said it numerous times. I think they take up the same uh, spot in the squad. I'd be surprised if we don't sell one of them. And very early in the window, not even early in the window, early in the summer before the window had even opened, we saw some rumors with Smith Rowe, uh, you know, potentially going to like Ipswich, and, and there were various rumors maybe even going to Germany. But those have all died down. It's it's a long time since we've heard any rumours about Emil Smith Rowe going anywhere this summer, and he's out there a week before anyone else, basically starting his preseason, getting his fitness up, and I love that. I absolutely love that. This is a player that is taking it seriously, and I don't think has given up on his place in the Arsenal squad. And like I said, I love that. So look, maybe we do end up keeping Smith Rowe. The issue for me would still be. He, he needs more minutes. Like, if, if Smith Rowe has another season at the club where he gets 300, 500 minutes, that, that is a 30, 40 million pound player that we're not utilizing enough. And, and it's not worth 30 to 40 million quid to keep him for him only to get those limited minutes. So we'll see what happens with him. Um, but it is good to see all of those players joining up in Marbella with Mikel. And uh, we'll see how they get on. But look, that is going to be the end of the video. I appreciate those of you that have watched it all the way through to the end. I will be back tomorrow with the normal streams as usual. Uh, we'll have the watch along later in the day. We'll have the Twitch stream as well. But until then, have a fantastic evening. Please do subscribe if you're new. Click on the like button. And I will catch you for the next one. Goodbye.